How can you train for the mountains when you live in a flat place? What trekking poles and budget packs do you recommend? Are all ultras for mountain goats? Find out in my new weekly Q&A series answering all your trail running questions. I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Films, the trail running advice and inspiration channel. If you're new here, then make sure you click the subscribe button and any books or gear that I mention in my videos you'll find links to in the YouTube film description below. Just click show more or the drop down arrow for details. So let's answer that first question. Will asks, how do you train for mountain ultras in a flat place? So first of all, this is definitely possible, but you do have to use a bit of imagination and do multiple hill reps on the longest rise you can find. My favourite weekly hill session for mountain ultras is five times five minute efforts up a one kilometre hill wearing my race pack. Try to keep the same consistent speed throughout so avoid starting off at a flat out sprint. Remember to keep your training specific to your race as well. So if the ascents are really, really steep, you'll probably be hiking. So train for that with multiple fast hiking reps on a really, really steep hill, possibly with poles if you think you'll be using them in the race. If the hills are more gradual and runnable, do multiple hill reps on the longest gradual hill you can find. There are a few technique tips you can use too. For example, Three Peaks ladies record holder, Vic Wilkinson, recommends a short, quick stride, keeping your shoulders and chest open rather than hunched over, which can compresses your lungs. She also advises running at a consistent speed so that you get into a steady rhythm up the hill. So for more of her top uphill and downhill tips, you can check out the video here. If there really are no natural hills where you live or work, then do reps on stairs in high-rise buildings, flats and multi-storey car parks, or even the slopes down into subways and up over bridges. A friend of mine called Raj Mahapatra trained in London and Manchester, both very flat cities, for the Bob Graham Round. That's 65 miles with 42 peaks, with over 8,000 metres of ascent in the Lake District, the record that Killian Jornet just broke. So Raj did hour long sessions full of repeats, reps, on steps up to bridges and on a short rise to a bench where he would do step ups and squats. And so inspired by Raj, I created this four part bench beasting workout series. So you can use this to train for hills in flat places. The video is here. Legendary fell runner and busy working mum to two girls, Helen Whitaker, knee diamantides, also did a ton of squats and lunges in training for the 2012 Dragon's Back race, where she came fourth overall and first lady. Simple exercises like these will strengthen your legs for hills, so check out some really useful ones here. Jason asks if I can recommend a basic, cheap running pack for his first half marathon. Now, Jason is doing the Great Eastern Run in Peterborough this October, which is actually a road half marathon. So on road races, there are generally water stations throughout the race. So I would actually advise not carrying a pack with water as there's no need and it will just weigh you down. So you can tuck a gel and a 20 pound note into your shorts or two tenors because they're waterproof these days. And to carry a smartphone, I would suggest a sports armband like uh, this one here from Ultimate Performance. It's called the Ridgeway and it goes for about 60 pounds. If you still think you need a cheap basic pack then I would consider this one. It's the Kalenji running pack from Decathlon which is £28. Or you could go for the smaller lighter Ron Hill Nano 3 litre vest which retails at 45 but I have seen it online for about 35 I'm doing a budget packs test next so I will let you know how the cheaper packs like this compare to those around the £100 mark. Kurt wants to know if I use trekking poles and if I have any recommendations. Yes, I do use trekking poles on really long distances or on multi-day races. So I swore by them on the Cape Wrath Ultra earlier this year, um, but I don't tend to use them on single day races. Usually for me, that's about 30 to 50 miles or possibly like seven to nine hours in the hills. Um, and that's because I'm mainly running. Um, I just use them when I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of fast hiking for a long time. So they must be also easily collapsible for rocky mountain sections when you need to use your hands too. 
So I used to use the Mountain King Trailblaze carbon poles that are about 110 pounds and, and they only weigh 231 grams for the pair. But during the Cape Wrath Ultra, I found that the tip would get stuck in the mud. And when you pulled it out, the other sections of the pole would also detach slightly, which was both alarming and a bit annoying after a while. So next, I would really like to try the Lecky Micro Trail Pro and the Black Diamond Distance Carbon Z that I've been shown at recent trade shows. So I feel a pole test coming on. So new subscriber Jane Hawksworth has been watching my Scarf L Sky Race film, you can see it here, and she wants to know if all ultras are so mountain goat-like. Definitely not, Jane. There are hundreds and hundreds of other trail races and ultras that don't have any technical exposed terrain. And by that, I mean rocky high bits. There are tons on straightforward, but still interesting paths and tracks. So one of my favorites is the Peak Skyline race of about 30 miles around five summits in the Peak District, all on good clear trails across the moors. So there's rocks underfoot and some steep hills, so it is really interesting to run on, but nothing where you need to use your hands or any big drops that might make your stomach lurch. So even more tame underfoot than that, you could try X Energy's three-day Druids Challenge race along the rolling fields and chalky clay paths of the Ridgeways National Trail. So both are really good ultras and highly recommended. I've done both and you can see more about the Druids Challenge here. This week's random thing that I saw which was cool is a Twitter post from Montaigne Ambassador Jen Scotney. She made her two latest race medals into coasters. She says she doesn't usually keep race medals, but she was proud of these two long ultras and she wanted to do something more than just hang them up. Isn't that the best idea ever? I haven't done that yet with my medals, I would like to, but my mum has made me this bean bag with my old race t-shirts. Isn't it brilliant? If you want to know how to make this, head to my blog. My mum's written all the instructions on there. It's www.wildgingerfilms.co.uk. That's the Great Eastern Run, that's the one Jason is doing. Uh, that's the Iceberg, oh that's a great race in Sweden, I absolutely love that. Oh, and this is the Scarfell Sky Race, that's the race I just mentioned. Uh, the one that Jane Hawksworth was finding a bit mountain goat. Uh, that's an absolutely fantastic race. There's Keswick Mountain Festival, 10 and 25k. Under the handle, in here, we've got the Druids Challenge. Three Peaks race, I haven't actually raced that, but I ran it after the race, so maybe it counts, I commentated. Stamford Striders, this is my local running club. And our local race, the Stamford Striders Valentine's 30K. If you do it as a couple, you get a special prize. And this was a really amazing adventure race that Open Adventure organised. So it's the Coast to Coast Adventure Race. We really, really love that. We did it a couple of times. That's me, um, my friend Sarah and Kate, who are my adventure racing buddies. So if you want to find out how to make this amazing race t-shirt beanbag, or maybe you could make a quilt in the same vein, then go to my blog. It's www.wildgingerfilms.co.uk. I will put a blog post about my mum's amazing beanbag on there. So my question for you this week is, what do you do with your race memorabilia? Type your answers in the YouTube comments below, and I'll read out the best one in next week's Q&A. So last week's question was which athlete would you most like to meet and what would you ask them? So I especially like this one from AJ who wants to ask Joss Naylor, legendary foul runner, how he can make sure he can still run when he's 70. So this is a great question and I am due to speak to Joss soon so I will ask him this. If you've got any more trail running questions for my weekly Q&A films then do type them below and subscribe if you haven't already and click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any new trail running videos. So enjoy your next run, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the trails.